And let's pray. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He is your strength. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. And now, Lord, after praising and worshiping and after reminding ourselves of who you are, Lord, it's now time, God, for us to be reminded again through your word. And so I pray now, oh God, Lord, that you would use me, give me clarity of thought, concision of speech. Lord, preaching belongs to you, Lord, I pray that, that uh, you would bless this moment. Lord, I pray, Lord, that, uh, that you would enlighten the, the, your hearers, open the hearts of your hearers, that they, they may receive your word, and that they will be better the way they came in today. Lord, I pray that we will leave here having assurance that you are with us, that you will, that you will continue to be our shepherd, but not only that, but that, you, that, that we are challenged to trust you more. Bless this moment, oh God. Be with me and give me strength. Hallelujah. And Lord, I pray for those that need uh, that need this word. I already prayed this, but I pray, Lord, that, that it would hit God, hit home. You, you're sovereign. You know, you knew who needed to hear what before I even asked you what to preach. So, Father, I pray. I'm sitting down. You stand up. Anything you have me to say, bring it to mind. And anything you don't have me to say, remove it from my mind. Lord, if Whatever's on this manuscript, Lord, you know I prepared it, but it all belongs to you. Spirit, have your way. Yes, yes, yes. In this moment. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you from the beginning, I am not going to get through all of this. So we're going to come back to Psalm 23 next week again. And we might do it a third time. I don't know. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all Psalm 23, 1 through 6. But I'm most likely going to stop at verse 4. <clears throat> um, yeah. So Psalm 23, if you have to say amen. amen. And um, I would challenge you for those that don't have it, uh, or those of you that, uh, that have it, I pray that you memorize this scripture. Many of you have said, I memorized this a long time ago. Good. Re-memorize it. Go over it. Uh, uh, meditate on it throughout the week. And the word in the scripture reads like this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to preach from these words. It's really simple. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Again, I apologize because I, I'm not going to get through all of this. But I believe that there is so much in here, and I've wrestled with so much, I had to figure out what to say when, amen, or ask the Lord what, when to say what. So bear with me today. I need your prayers. The writer of Psalm 23 is none other than King David. Scholars have uh, said that David most likely wrote this song uh, during his reign as king over Judah. And what is most interesting about Psalm 23 is the fact that David is writing one psalm, but he's writing it from two perspectives that he is familiar with. Well, what are the two perspectives? Shepherd and sheep. If you, uh, if you uh, look at uh, David's bio, if you go back to 1 Samuel, I believe around chapter 16, you will find that David was indeed a shepherd. Uh, when, Sam, when the prophet Samuel was coming to anoint him as king, all the brothers came out and, and they said, well, Samuel said, well, surely this is the king, his first brother, David's first brother. And then God said, no, that's not him, for man was on the outside, but God was at the heart. 
And he looked at Jesse, uh, David's dad, and says, Do you have any other sons? Because clearly none of these men are it. And he says, Well, there's David in the back. And mind you, David is in the back uh, shoveling sheep, though. Uh, and he is taking care of the sheep, watching over the sheep. He is feeding the sheep. He is caring for the sheep. The sheep are resting in his stead. David knows exactly what it means to be a shepherd. However, the other aspect, David knows what it means to be a sheep. David knows what it means to have his head anointed with oil. He knows what it means to be anointed and being put in front of the table of his enemies. Being anointed to be king, knowing that Saul is watching and Saul doesn't like the fact that he's king, but yet he can't do anything about it. David knows what it means to rely on the shepherd as a sheep because a sheep always uh, is, is always led by the shepherd. And so while he's in the wilderness, every moment he is saying, Lord, is this what you want me to do? David knows what it means to be helpless in the wilderness, running from Saul, going from place to place, doing his best to survive, and yet he is looking to the shepherd. What would you have me to do? David knows what it means to be a shepherd. David knows what it means to be a sheep. And David brings these two perspectives together, and, and what we're going to find, watch this, as a shepherd, David understands, uh, that as a shepherd, David understands that, uh, that, uh, that the, the, the livelihood of the sheep is dependent on the shepherd. One more time, this, this, these, are, these are two perspectives, this is very big. The livelihood of the sheep depends on the shepherd. However, the, the, the challenge and he knows what it means to be a sheep, meaning that the submission of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the providence of the shepherd is dependent upon the submission of the sheep. One more time. The providence of the shepherd is dependent upon the submission of the sheep. And what we find in Psalm 23, here are my two arguments, here it is. Our assurance is because the Lord is our shepherd, we are assured that he will give us everything we need. However, the challenge is, if the Lord is our shepherd, we must trust him to daily lead us to what we need. There is, there is a, two aspects here. The Lord is our shepherd to take care of us, but at the other end, we must trust that he will do so. We must govern ourselves and submit to the shepherd. And, and I simply, and I, and I, I ain't going to be long. Uh, in other words, let me say this. Let me say it this way. God has everything that you need, but you need to trust that he will give you everything that you need. There is, uh, there is a dynamic here. There is a relationship between sheep and shepherd. The shepherd will give oversight, but the sheep must trust. Simple as that. I, I, I'm not getting no deeper. The shepherd will give oversight, but the sheep must trust. And, if, and I argue, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, and I argue that many of us have missed out on the shepherd's care. Because we have not taken heed or we have not trusted the shepherd. I argue, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, and I'm, I'm going to say this later, but, but I argue that some of us have missed the still waters from the shepherd. We have missed the green pastures of the shepherd. He's willing to give us everything that we need, but we miss out on what he's giving us because we don't trust him. Y'all uh, probably hear me, heard, uh, heard me say this all the time since the covenant knows where I'm going. There was an old woman at Mount Ararat Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Charlie Bates, Sister Annie Kate Jackson. Sister Annie Kate Jackson had this one song, and she said, We still don't trust him enough. After all that God has done for us, we still don't trust them in the Bible. She is singing that song. But it's the same here. I argue that you may be missing out on what God will have for you because you just don't trust him enough. And so I simply want to encourage you to trust the Lord and to believe that everything that you need, he will supply. Uh, are you with me? I'm not going to be long. I'm going to try and move quickly. Now, now, pray for me, Pastor Rutherford. This is rough. Now, now, I'm only, <laughs> I'm only going to do verse one. <laughs> I read all of it. I'm going to reference the rest of it, but I'm only going to do verse one because I, I believe that verse one literally undergirds the rest of the chapter. All right. Verse one, and, and in truth, I would 
meditate on this. When, when, when I, when, after I break this down and I pray that it encourages you, I pray this makes sense. But, but after I'm done, I want you to chew on this. And I want you to think about this. The first verse, what does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. First three words. The Lord is. Love it. I, I like the first three words because watch this. It describes, it describes the character of God. And yet at the same time, it guarantees the promises of the chapter. The Lord is. I'm trying, I'm kind of having fun, I'm not going to lie. Remember, the livelihood of the sheep is dependent on who? The shepherd. So the, the, the sheep are, 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 are only as good as the shepherd's care. Well, good, we have good news for us because who's our shepherd? The Lord. Watch the emphasis on the Lord is. Is. Let the church say is. is. I like is because, because is is, this is going to sound a little crazy, but is is who he is. Right. Is uh -huh. is who he is. What do you mean by that? Dr. Robert Smith, you want to hear me mention him a couple times, he's becoming my favorite preacher right now. But he, he, he says that God lives in a perpetual state of isness. He doesn't, it, it's, it's bad grammar, but it's good theology. He, 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 he stays the same. Hear me. God, God, I want you to catch this. Catch this for a minute. God does not grow up. God, watch me. I'm trying to keep it together. God doesn't learn. He knows. He, he's in a perpetual state of isness. He does, God does not find out. God does not think about. God does not hesitate. God does not second guess. God is. Is. And here's what I love about it. And, and, and this is why, and this is why he looked at Moses in Exodus and he said, God, Moses says, Who do I say sent you? He says, I am. I am means I is. I is, I will have, I is. I'm in a perpetual state of isness. What does that mean? That means I said it earlier today. He is the same yesterday, today. And forever more. Which means, watch this, which means if he's faithful today, he will be faithful tomorrow. Yes. If he loves me today, he will love me tomorrow. Yes. If he provided today, he will provide for me tomorrow. Yes. Why? Because that's who he is. Yes. Ah, that's why Paul said in Ephesians, and he cannot deny himself because that's who he is. And if the Lord is your shepherd, then that means that you can, you can guarantee that he won't change on you. He won't decide that I'm going to leave you today. He's not going to decide to change his mind. Why? Because that's who he is. The assurance that the Lord is my shepherd. The assurance that he'll make me lie down in green pastures. The assurance that he'll leave me beside still waters is based on what? Who he is. Does that make sense? He is, but, 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 I, I gotta, I gotta, can I go a step further? But before I move on, that's just the is isness of God. That's, 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 if you will, his loyalty to us. But now let's talk about his power. <laughs> because you have to understand, there are many people that, that would love to be your shepherd. Your employer is, uh, some of you, if you're not careful, you'll think your employer is your shepherd. You think your mama is your shepherd. You think your friend is your shepherd. You think whoever, your president is your shepherd. You think who the government is your shepherd. But the truth of the matter is, reality check, they cannot supply for you like you need to be supplied for. Uh -huh. they, they, they can't take care of you. Like, listen, they can only do but so much. They can tell you to wear your mask. And yes, we should be doing all of those things. But let me tell you, out of all of that stuff, the one who's taking care of you is Christ. Yes, 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 yes. The Lord is your shepherd. Now, we're not, now, 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 let me talk about his power. Because, because we're talking about, again, let's go back to it. Who is the shepherd? The Lord. Well, now we're, we're talking about his power. Remember, the livelihood of the sheep is dependent upon the shepherd. Well, I'm glad he has my loyalty, but but does he have, but is, but can he really take care of me? Well, you have to understand. Now, think about your needs. And I, and I mean, I'm not talking about your money. No, no, no. I'm, thinking, I'm talking get to the bare minimum. I'm talking about when you sleep at night. Who's watching over you? I'm talking about when you drove over here. What guarantees that you were going to get here safe? 
I'm trying to keep it together. When you go to your job, what guarantees that they will not fire you? And what guarantees that if they do, that you will find another way? Are you catching what I'm saying? What guarantees that your friends will stay with you the entire time? Who is it? That, see, that's my point. You can't put your trust in man. You've got to put your trust in God. Why? Because God is the only one that is capable of taking care of you. How do we know, Pastor? Well, I, what I love is like when it starts simply with you sleeping. Well, the, uh, Isaiah tells us, or not Isaiah, excuse me, but Psalm 121 tells us that he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, 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 if, if Lauren Hill was here, she would tell you his eye is on the sparrow. And he watches over you. Nothing catches him by surprise. God doesn't sleep. God is always watching you. But then on top of that, there's nothing he can't handle. Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow, he doesn't grow faint, nor does he grow weary. God doesn't grow tired. He doesn't know what tired means. Can I go another step? Not only, not only that, but the truth of the matter is, not only does he have all power, but he's everywhere. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from you? If I ascend to the heavens, you're there. But if I make my bed in hell, you're there too. There's nowhere that God can't have his eye on you. He's Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. And above all else, he is your shepherd. And if he's all these things, then surely you can learn to relax. Why? Because he's got it all under control. Mind you, this is your shepherd. Not mine. It is mine. Yes, but 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 I'm talking to you right now. Your 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 shepherd. He's watching over you. I'm I, I'm an under shepherd. I'm just telling you what the Lord has me to say. But He is your shepherd. This is why Jesus says in John 10, 14 and 15, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Are you with me? Yeah. He has, <laughs> he's in a perpetual state of is. I can say talk about that all day. <laughs> is. I, I love, I love God. And, 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 and he's all powerful, all knowing. He's God. But now, but now let's let's go back to verse one. I'm almost done. Let me go back to verse one. Because it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Emphasis. We already did the Lord. We already did is. Well, what's the next one? My. I like that. He's my shepherd. Well, here's the challenge with the text. Because if he's, if he's your shepherd, then what does that make you? That's all I said. Sheep. I'm glad you said it. Because, because I'm glad you said it. Because cause here's the hard part. Uh, uh, sheep are not smart animals. That's why, I, that's why I was kind of waiting for you to say it because I didn't want to break it to you. Uh, 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 sheep, no offense. Well, what's we're all sheep in here. Sheep are, are, are dumb animals. There's a story uh, in, uh, on the BBC News that uh, happened about maybe 2007 to 2008. Uh, there was a story about this uh, in Istanbul that there was a man who walked out or walked out after a morning coffee. And he looked over his cliff and he saw, uh, he saw all of his sheep dead in a ditch. Not in the ditch, but over the cliff at the bottom of the cliff. And what reporters come to say is that the one sheep jumped over. Uh -huh. And then all the other sheep just kept following. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they just kept jumping over. And they kept... Sheep are not smart people, are smart animals. But then it gets worse. Not only are sheep not smart animals, but, but sheep are very fragile. Uh -huh. They're very scared. They're very helpless Animals. If you have to pick an animal that you want to be, you do not want to be a sheep. The sheep is defenseless. You cannot, a uh, sheep will not fight you. If you clap at a sheep too loud, that sheep will freeze up and fall over. Sheep are uh, nothing special about sheep. And yet we find in the scriptures over and over again that God calls his people sheep. Oh, everybody got quiet because we got the sheep part. <laughs> Psalm 100 verse 3 says, uh, And know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we're not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yes. Pastor, you, are you calling me dumb? No, no, no. Yes. God forbid. <laughs> but, 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 but there comes it, but we have to realize mm -hmm. that we're helpless. That's right. Yeah. 
You, you're, you're helpless without God. That's right. You need someone. We just got finished saying it. We, we need someone to take care of us at all times. You need someone to protect you from all things. And not only that, you don't just need blind optimism when somebody says you're going to be okay. No, I need assurances. Right. I need guarantees that I will be fine. But there's a blessing in that. That's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, uh, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Yeah. For theirs is the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means I, I take, I, take I, I get happy in my in my bankruptcy. I'm happy in my helplessness. I'm happy that I'm not strong because I know someone that will take care of me. I am poor in spirit. I am in need of God every day. Well, now watch this. What what does the shepherd do? When we acknowledge our need of him. Are you with me? All right. I'm going real quick. Verses, verses, uh, verses 2 through 4. I'm going to try the best I can. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the waters. To make me lie down in green pastures, that, that, that means I'm content and satisfied with God. Real quick, real quick. I'm going to come back to this next week. But to be to, to lay down on green pastures, that means I am content and satisfied with God. He leads me beside still waters. That means he allows me to refresh and relax. He restores my soul. I'm real quick. Right? I mean really quick. I find it interesting that he says he restores my soul. Why does he need to restore my soul if I'm already in the fold? Hear me, let me talk real quick, and I mean real quick to help me, Holy Spirit, talk real quick to the sheep that are not in the fold. I believe that this scripture is not is not speaking about the is not speaking about the, the sheep that are already in the fold because they're already restored. But I think he's talking about the sheep, or if you will, the one that is not with the 99. He goes and, and there's a scholar that says that to restore my soul means to bring it back. And so there are maybe, maybe, maybe some in here, or maybe you have some family members that, that, that have wandered from the fold, have wandered from the flock. But I'm here to tell you, and for those of you that may not have given your life totally to Christ, there are, there are, there's a promise that God will leave the 99 to get the one. And after you have been lost, after you have been afraid, after you have been insecure, he will take you and he will restore your soul. Just real quick for those of you that have wandered from the flock, those of you that don't know who Jesus is or don't want to know who Jesus is, let me tell you, only God can restore you like you need to be restored. Here we go. That was real quick. That was real quick. He makes me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That just simply means that I am assured that God is going to take care of me. He will never stir me wrong. But watch the emphasis. Watch the emphasis. Are y'all still? Are you, I know your Bible's still open. Your Bible's still open. Look at what it says over and over. He leads me. He restores me. He makes me. He leads me. Over and over. His rod and staff come for me. Notice he, he, he. He leads, leads, leads. There is nothing on the sheep's part that they are doing. This is full shepherd initiative. Nothing that we are doing that brings these things. Watch this. The shepherd takes initiative to take care of the sheep. Fully him has nothing to do with us. Uh-oh. Okay. But then that means, but however, at the same time, within the responsibility of the shepherd, you find the responsibility of the sheep. The sheep, watch this, they trust the shepherd. He now what, let me can I can I go back can I go back down to the scriptures? Let me go back down to where I was. He makes me lie down. Here's what I love about this. I actually had to do research on this. I, I became a sheepologist, y'all. I became a sheepologist, Sister Allie. I went and I looked up this stuff. And do you know that sheep don't lay down if they're hungry? And sheep don't lie down unless they feel safe. And so, and so you must understand that, 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 that shepherds don't take sheep and say, lay down. No, no, no. But the sheep feel so safe. That they feel that there is no way, no need to worry about what's going on around me. All I got to do is lay down because the shepherd will take care of everything. It is, it is, if you, there it is again. It is this submission to the trustworthiness of the shepherd that brings them at ease. The reason why, watch this, he said he leads me beside still waters. You don't drive sheep to the waters. No, but my sheep know my voice. And so he calls them, and because, watch me, they trust the shepherd, they'll follow. Oh, yeah. 
He doesn't make them. Oh, I'm trying to keep myself together. God doesn't make you do anything. But watch me. If you trust him, he'll follow. You'll follow. If you trust him, you'll go wherever he has you to go. The sheep must trust the shepherd and submissively give themselves over to his care. The reason why he's able to make them lie down. The reason why he's able to lead them. The reason why he's able to lead them in paths of righteousness. Even though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's simply this. They trust him. Yes, yes, yes. The reason, and, I, and mind you, every verse, he makes me. He leads me. He, all of these things. But you see three things. The shepherd sending them, mm. them following, and them getting their provision. That's right, that's right. The shepherd leading. The shepherd, the God, and they get their, them coming and they get their provision. Help me, Holy Spirit. And I'm simply arguing that when you trust God, you will get that provision that you are looking for. I argue, now, now here's now, here's the hard part. Here's the hard part. I'm almost done, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Are y'all still with me? Yeah, yes. I argue, here's my argument. I argue that the Lord cannot be your shepherd Unless you trust the shepherd to be your Lord. Here's, I, I, I'm, I'm saying the same thing over and over, over, over again. I'm not saying anything different. Mm -hmm. See, in order for you to trust the shepherd, mm -hmm. you, you got you to gotta submit to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. See, we, we don't mind God providing for us. Right. But I got a problem when God is in my affairs. Yeah, right. When he's in my business. Mm -hmm. When he gets to tell me what to do. And, and I argue that, that you can't have the provision of the shepherd unless you have submitted to the shepherd. All right. yeah, yeah. So what, do I, what am I saying? When the shepherd says, I need you to go this way, you're saying, I don't want to go that way. And God says, I'm leading you this way. And you're saying, I don't want to go that way. I want to stay right where I am. Yes, and you can deny that. But while you are denying that, God says, I'm leading you to still walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see you, are you catching what I'm saying? You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be a sheep of the shepherd and the shepherd can't call you when he feels like it. You have to trust that no matter where you go, no matter what happens in your life, when the shepherd calls you, you can trust and you should know that whatever I say yes to, he's going to take care of me. I believe, I believe, I believe God is ought to be the Lord of your life. And you are missing out on the still waters. You're missing out on the green pastures. You're missing out in, of, on peace of your life uh -huh. because you won't take heed to wow. the shepherd. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The shepherd knows what he said. God doesn't make anybody go anywhere. He says, "Come this way. Yeah. I'm going to lead you. I don't want to go that way." But he, but 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 if we trust him, yeah. and I watch me, I submit myself to him as Lord over my life. Meaning, you have what you have say in whatever. Whenever, however, when I submit myself to the Lord, Lord of my life, it means that I trust that no matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter what is happening, if I just follow him, he will take care of me. I'm done. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the back of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yes. What would happen? Your rod and your staff come for me. Even when you lead me somewhere that scares the mess out of me. Even though you lead me somewhere I am not familiar with. Even though you lead me somewhere where I am around danger. The trust is no matter where the shepherd takes me, I will follow. Because I trust that he will take care of me. Does that make sense? We've got to learn. Yes, Lord, be my shepherd. Oh, but there is a submission. There is a submission on our part. Can you trust what God is doing? Can you trust that every morning, wherever the shepherd leads you, you are willing to go? Because I trust that he will take care of me. Where he leads, I will follow. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But I got one more. <laughs> uh, uh, um. Look, I'm, I'm done. I really am done. Look at verses 2 through 4. 2 through 4. Look at what it says, and I'm done. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I found this so interesting. A, a commentary uh, brought this up, and I thought it was a more beautiful thing, Pastor Jerome. Do you, now, now, you, you'll see a pattern here. The green pastures, the still waters, the lead, he leads me, the rod and your staff. Do you know what all this means? Those are all the things that sheep need. All the things that sheep need. Sheep need green pastures. Every morning because of the hot day, sheep need uh, 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 still waters. Wherever the sheep go, they need to be guided and they need to be protected. And they need to be guided in the right direction. All of this is simply saying, back to verse 1, I didn't forget the final part. The Lord, thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. <laughs> Everything that I need, he's going to take care of me. That's what, that's what the scripture is saying, that everything, the green pasture, still waters, uh, leading me in life, no matter what happens, it all points back to verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I lack nothing. Yeah. But I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Some of you say, no, Pastor, I get it. I'm with it. I'm with it. But, 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 I am lacking. There's no money in my account. I mean, I am lacking. I got issues that I'm dealing with. You're telling me the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, I'm, I, I won't lack anything, and yet I find myself in lack. Now, the, the promise, help me, Holy Spirit. The promise is not in the provision of the, shelter, of, of, the, of the shepherd, but the promise is the shepherd himself. See, the, the promise is that, that, watch this, I want you to catch this, you have to understand that this isn't, this Psalm 23, this isn't just a one-time thing. This is every morning. <laughs> this is every day. Every day he needs me to side still waters. Every day he puts me in green pastures. Every day he takes care of me. It's every day. He, he, he'll, he'll take care of you. He'll take care of you. The Lord is your shepherd. You're not going to be in one. And the point is this. You need to trust in the shepherd every day. Right. To provide for you every day. You may not have a whole lot of money, but, but, but the shepherd is saying you don't need to have a whole lot of money in order for me to provide for you. Right. Woo! The point is, watch me. The trust is not in the bank account. The trust is in the shepherd. All right. All right. Are you catching me? Back to verse 1. The Lord I shall not want. Notice the text does not say the Lord. The text does not say the Lord gives green pastures, which is why I shall not want. No, no, no. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he's the shepherd, he leads me to the green pastures. He leads me to the still waters. The shepherd is going to make sure one way or another, I'm going to get what I need. If that means he's got to use somebody else to get to me, he'll give me what I need. If it means that he's got to send a check, God will give me what I need. Come here, Elijah. They don't believe me. Elijah will tell you I was in the wilderness. Three years famine. And a raven came. One of the most selfish birds in the world. And he drank, and I, and I drank from a book until the brook dried up. He gave me everything that I needed. The point is this. The shepherd will supply all your needs according to his riches. And he will always supply. Yes, right. Ain't no money in my pocket. He will supply. Yes, right. I'm trying to keep it together, but I feel my help. Yes, right. I, I don't know what tomorrow will bring. He will supply. Yes, right. And I don't need to know who holds it. I don't need to know what happens tomorrow because I know who holds it. And if the shepherd holds it, I know I'm going to be the all right. Why? He will supply. Yes, right. That's the promise. He will supply. Yes, right. If I, can, if, I can, if I can really sum up, I really could have just summed up Psalm 23 simply like this. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, yes. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, yes. <laughs> morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I needed, your hand provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, that's what Psalm 23 is. Yes, yes. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning, you're going to give me water. I'm trying to keep it together. Every morning. There'll be bread somewhere. Every morning, money in my pocket. Every morning, gas in my car. Every morning, you'll give me peace. Every morning, I get joy. Every morning, God says, my grace is sufficient. And whatever you need, I will. I will supply. Loose your weary. God says, I'll supply for you. I am God. I'm your shepherd. Stop crying. Stop worrying. I Take care of I gotta let it go. 
There's a, watch me, I'm done, I'm done, really end up, help me on spirit. There is a, there is a stepping out on faith when you trust in the Lord. There's a stepping out on faith because you don't want to go in one place. You don't want to do something that God is leading you to do. And God is saying, I need you to step out on faith and go that place I'm leading you to go. Stepping out on faith doesn't mean I just go and God follows. No, stepping out on faith means I'm following where he's leading are you catching the drift? Leading. Yes. The shepherd leads. Yes. Yes. I'm going where he leads. And the promise is, when I go where he leads, he will take care of me. I submit. I trust that the shepherd will take care of me. And I know by the time all this is over, everything will be supplied. Yes, 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 yes. He'll supply for you. He'll supply for you. He'll supply. He'll supply. I'm sorry, I got I, I, I got I got I got somebody needs it. This job is not the greatest, but he'll supply. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like where I am, but he'll supply. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but he'll supply. Yes, yes. I'm feeling lonely right now, but he'll supply. Yes, yes. He'll give me what I need. Yes. Ah, I don't have to turn to the left. Yes. I don't have to turn to the right. Yes. I don't have to compromise. Yes. I don't need to go nowhere. Yes. Oh, I don't have to turn to sin. Yes. I don't have to turn to friends. Step out on faith every day and go to him and say, Lord, supply. Shepherd, supply for me. Shepherd, make me lie down in green pastures. Shepherd, lead me beside still waters. Shepherd, restore my soul. Shepherd, I'm afraid. Would your rod and staff comfort me? Shepherd, anoint my head with oil in the presence of my enemies. Shepherd, remind me that surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stand to your feet. Thank, you. thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your Savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sinned in my life. And I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins, and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.